Kauai is dead as ship, but Pakistan edge day one honors. Employing a combination of new and old ball SS, Pakistan's pace bowlers subjected Australia to their toughest day of batting of the series so far, as they took the honors on the first day of the final test. Having chosen to bat first, Australia struggled to recover from a disastrous start and will resume tomorrow 5 to 232 after another grinding day on an unresponsive pitch with all-rounder Cameron Green and keeper Alex Carey the last recognized batting hopes. Once again it was Usman Kawaya leading scorer in each of Australia's four innings of this Quantas tour to date, who held together the batting after Pat Cummins won a crucial toss on a pitch that is expected to benefit spinners as the match enters its final days. Although the same erroneous claim was made about the surfaces in Rawalpindi and Karachi that produced bowler-breaking draws. But when Kawaya was removed courtesy of a blinding catch by Pakistan skipper Babar Azam at slip, Australia's batting blueprint to post a first innings total similar in scale to the 556 they managed in Karachi was hanging by a thread. Babar snares a beauty as Kawaya falls short of Tan. In the wake of Kawaya's removal, Pakistan chose not to take a second new ball when it became due after 80 overs such was their faith in the quick's reverse wing capabilities. And they were rewarded when Naseem Shah claimed the scalp of Travis Head in the final half hour. Naseem, who was only added to the test squad in the days prior to the series opener when fellow fast bowlers fell victim to injuries and COVID-19, was omitted for the second test, but recalled in line with both teams view reverse swing would be a dominant factor at Lahore. However, it was the incisions Pakistan made with the new ball this morning that set Australia on their heels and despite another masterful contribution of more than five hours from Kawaya, the tourists remained on the metaphorical back foot all day. Shaheen Shah Afrida set the tone when the left armour removed prized pair David Warner and Manus Labashain in his second over of the day, and by day's end all but one wicket had fallen to Pakistan's pace men. Sizzling Shaheen gets verbal in stunning opening spell. The sight of the ball swinging reverse before it sustained 30 overs of wear and tear meant speed played a far greater role than spin despite the pitch's benign nature, and ensured Australia's scoring rate remained below three runs per over for much of a hard-fought first day. Even Kawaya, who can rightly claim to be among the world's most informed batters at present, found runs harder to come by than any innings of 75 deliveries or more he's played for more than three years. Had he found three more runs in his sole outing at Rawalpindi and an additional nine today, Kawaya would have joined Rahul Dravid as the only player to post centuries in three consecutive tests in Pakistan although the current India coaches run spanned two series in 2004 and 2006. As it stands, he is the leading run scorer in the Bano Kodi Trophy battle and boasts an average of 107.8 since his recall to the Australia Test side in January, a month after the left-hander turned 35. Usman Kawaya's 2022 in Test cricket 137-101 asterisk 611-97,160-44 asterisk 91,647 runs at an average of 107.83 hashtag PAKVAUS NSJK DBLXPM cricket.au March 21, 2022. It also means he is one of only two batters to average more than 100 in tests after reaching that age with his efforts thus far narrowly eclipsing the other golden oldie, Don Bradman. Kawaya figured in a vital 138-run stand for the third wicket with Steve Smith, which was the only 50-plus partnership Australia managed for the day, and helped them recover from a faltering start in which they slumped to 2-8 to eight inside three overs. Smith has now gone 14 innings without posting a triple-figure score, an event that for most mortal batters would scarcely raise an eyebrow given his averaged almost 45 through that period. But a combination of the 32-year-old's historic benchmarks and the fact his past 50 in half those knocks will only compound the frustration that was etched on his face when he was pinned in front of his stumps by recalled 19-year-old Quick Nacing. Asked prior to this test about his inability to convert starts into big scores of late, Smith claimed he wasn't troubled but also noted it was unusual for him to be dismissed in the 70s, 
as was the case in the first two matches of the series. And added he hoped to push on should he get himself into a similar position this match. He seemed destined to make good his vow today, and was so deeply embedded in his legendary batting bubble, from the outset, he at one stage complained about the movement of the remote-controlled camera buggy, as the bowler was in delivery stride even though it was operating at mid-wicket. But on 59, and with Pakistan's pace trio exploiting the reverse swing that had become apparent with the ball barely 30 overs old, he moved habitually across his stumps and was beaten on the inside of his bat and knew immediately he was finished. The breakthrough, which saw Australia still uncomfortably placed at 3 to 146 shortly after tea, should have brought another, as Head battled to pick up the pace in the pitch and the swinging ball. Head had scored seven when he looked to lift off spinner Sajid Khan over his head, but miscued and sent a scorching chance chest high to the bowler, who was unable to lay a hand on the ball before it slapped into his left shoulder. It was the third tough chance and the second court and bold offering Pakistan had missed during the course of another bat-dominated day on a pitch that prizing wickets will seemingly be as rare as finding diamonds in the dirt. Despite a level of mystery hovering over the nature of Gaddafi Stadium's pitch, as the venue hosted its first test in 13 years, it was revealed, to the surprise of nobody, to be as similarly devoid of life as the tracks trotted out at Rawalpindi and Karachi. After Shaheen's early double strike it became clear the pace bowlers were struggling to get the ball through to the keeper at anything above shin height. And with no turn on offer for Pakistan's spinners on day one, as would be expected, Kawaya and Smith were able to slowly rest the initiative if still unwilling to dictate the tempo. When speaking to media on Test Eve, Barbar noted the team that won the coin toss at Gaddafi Stadium the following morning would have the edge, and his heart might have sunk when it showed tails as per Cummins call. But the Pakistan skipper, playing his maiden test in the city of his birth noting Lahore hasn't hosted a match since the 2009 atrocity, also felt the pitch might offer a bit more to seamers, as reflected in his team's makeup. Pakistan selectors opted to recall a third specialist quick, Naseem, had claimed 1 to 89 from his 21 overs in Australia's only batting innings of the first test in place of all-rounder for him Ashraf, whose couple of wickets in Karachi were cancelled out by dual failures with the bat. That call looked to have been vindicated in the day's opening over when Shaheen fired a short ball at Warner that took the Australia opener by surprise as he fended it away from in front of his face. And a more adroit fielder than Imam Olhakat short leg might have made more of the chance. But the tactic reaped reward in Shaheen's next over by ensuring a wary Warner remained camped on the crease, and a fuller, faster delivery angled into the left-hander would have ripped out leg stump had it not crashed into the opener's front pad. Quick single Pakistan pick five bowlers for series decider. Two balls later, Shaheen was in full celebration mode when Labashain was dismissed for the third duck of his 26 test career to date, and the second in as many matches. As was the case at Karachi last week, the world's top-ranked test batter fell victim to his keenness to get off the mark. Whereas it was an ill-judged run that cost him his wicket in the second test, today it was a wide, full ball from Shaheen that angled across the right-hander and drew him into his favoured flick drive through cover only to yield a low catch to keeper Mohamed Rizwan. For the first time in the series, Australia found themselves two wickets down with the ball new and Pakistan's pace bowlers able to apply early pressure. However, Apart from a vehement LBW shout from Shaheen to the first ball he faced that clearly struck the former Australia skipper outside off stump, Smith was unfazed by the situation, as he and Kawaya set about the fight back. Despite Kawaya's irrefutable claims to being his team's in-form batter, it was Smith who set the initial tempo, with four boundaries in the first hour including a pair of exquisite cover drives when Pakistan's bowlers overpitched. Soon after the day's first drinks break, Baba introduced spin, and it seemed the preference for pace might have been misplaced when left-arm orthodox Nauman Ali created two decidedly different chances in his opening over. The first was a rare misstep from Kawaya, whose attempted drive brought an outside edge that flew quickly between the ankles of Baba at slip before the skipper could react. Quick single test cricket makes emotional return to Lahore. 
two deliveries later, Smith advanced 